So you, you then move to Keynes and, and Irving Fisher, right. which bring another dimension of governance, the whole question of monetary and credit policy. That's right. To, Starting with, with, with Fisher um, um, and the, the dip, you know, the big depression, the, the financial panics and big depressions of 1893 and 1907 um, really focused American economists on, not on the issue of growth, because there, that wasn't really seen as a problem because, you know, productivity and real wages were rising very, you know, and everybody knew it. Uh, but, but periodically there were these, you know, the economy kind of collapsed. And in the U.S. it caused a tremendous amount of political strife. And that's what, you know, um, one of the things that pulled Irving Fisher into um, monetary economics and the issue of what caused recessions and what caused inflation. So, um, which he traced to the government's issuance of, of money. And their, you know, their theory was that economic activity in the short run, the level of economic activity and therefore of employment was determined by the flow of money through the economy. And if you had uh, a, money, a money drought because of, say, a financial panic and a financial collapse, which you know, were not infrequent, then you had a depression and high unemployment. If you had a money flood, then you had inflation. So there, this, you know, sort of macro theory not only connected the two uh, sort of extreme diseases of that era, high unemployment or high inflation, to the same phenomenon, but it, um, it pointed to the obvious solution, which is that the government had to uh, manage the flow of money through the economy, which was, you know, again, an expansion of the idea, you know, which is, which is really at the heart of this book, that, that econo you know, modern economics was about seizing control of taking, des you know, humanity's destiny into its own hands. Okay. Rather than being the victim of natural right. forces. And leave, right, and at the beginning of the Depression, they did not get a hearing, certainly in, not in England and not in the U.S. But there was this amazing natural experiment because every country ultimately went off gold, but they didn't all go off at the same time. And the ones that went off, uh, like Japan, Sweden, Brazil, Argentina, you know, some of the other Scandinavian countries, early on, didn't have a depression. They had a nasty recession. England was forced off gold in 1931. It had maybe, its, its depression was maybe a third of the severity of the United States. The United States, which hung on until FDR um, came into office and, and took the U.S. off gold, had the worst, the worst uh, depression. Industrial production fell in half, and you know, as compared to Sweden, which was like down 10 percent. As soon as a, you know a country uh, engaged in a monetary expansion, there was a recovery. Okay, so all the all the talk on on the side of the people who you know, well, you know, the real problem is inequality. The real problem is is lack of you know budget balance. You know, all these different sort of structural theories were, you know, there was a natural experiment, and as soon as all that changed was, you know, monetary expansion, there, there were recoveries. Mm -hmm.